finished. Now we will study how to model data using entity relationship diagram also known as an ERD or ER diagram. ERD is a network model that describes the stored data layout of a system at a high level of abstraction. Let us start with the components of an entity relationship diagram which are entities, attributes, relationships. Let us see each one of the component in detail starting from entity. An entity is represented by a rectangular box on an entity relationship diagram. It represents a collection or set of objects, things in the real world whose individual members or instances have the following characteristic. Each can be identified uniquely in some fashion. For example, if we have an entity known as customer, we must be able to distinguish one customer from another, perhaps by an account number, by last name or by national ID card number. Each plays a necessary role in the system we are building. That is, for the entity to be legitimate, we must be able to say that the system could not operate without access to its members. Each can be described by one or more data elements. Thus, a customer can be described by such data elements as name, address, credit limit and phone number. In many of the systems you develop, entities will be the system's representation of a material thing in the real world. Thus, typical objects are customers, inventory items, employees, manufactured parts and the like. The object is the material thing in the real world, for example customer. However, an object may also be something non-material, for example a bank account. Remember by convention we use singular nouns as the name of the entities, for example customer and employee. Attribute is another component of the ER diagram. A data object contains a set of attributes that act as an aspect, quality, characteristic or descriptor of the object. For example, object, automobile contains these attributes namely make, model, body type, price, engine type, owner, ID number. The third component of the ERD is relationship. Objects are connected to one another by relationships. The relationship is determined by the business rules and is represented by diamond. Figure on your screen shows a simple relationship that could exist between two or more objects. While modeling data, we need to understand how many occurrences of object X relate to how many occurrences of object Y. This leads to data modeling concept called cardinality. Cardinality is usually expressed as simply one or many, taking into consideration all combinations of one and many, two objects can be related as one to one, one to many and many to many. Let us see details of these relationships starting from one to one. One to one relationship 
means an occurrence of object A can relate to one and only one occurrence of object B and an occurrence of B can relate to only one occurrence of A. For example, a citizen of Pakistan has a unique national identity card number. One to many relationship means one occurrence of object A can relate one or many occurrences of object B but an occurrence of B can relate to only one occurrence of A. For example, a mother can have many children but a child can have only one mother. Many to many relationship means an occurrence of object A can relate to one or many occurrences of B while an occurrence of B can relate to one or more occurrences of A. For example, an uncle can have many nephews while a nephew can have many uncles. Process specification or P-spec are used to specify the processing details implied by a bubble within a DFD. It describes the input to the function, the algorithm that is applied to the input and the output that is produced. Restrictions and design constraints are also indicated in PSpec. Data flow modeling notes. Each process on a DFD may in turn be exploded to create a more detailed child diagram. The process on a DFD that exploded is called the parent process. The primary rule for creating child diagrams, vertical balancing, dictates that a child diagram cannot produce output or receive input that the parent process does not also produce or receive. All data flow in or out of the parent process must be shown flowing in or out of the child diagram. Each bubble is refined until it does just one thing. The expansion ratio decreases as the number of levels increase. Most systems require between 3 and 7 levels for an adequate flow model. A single data flow item, arrow, may be expanded as levels increase, data dictionary provides information. Dear students, the last topic of this unit is data dictionary. The analysis model encompasses representations of data objects, function and control. In each representation, data objects and or control items play a role. Therefore, it is necessary to provide an organized approach for representing the characteristic of each data object and control item. This is accomplished with the data dictionary. The data dictionary has been proposed as a semi-formal grammar for describing the content of objects defined during structured analysis. Although the format of dictionaries varies from tool to tool, most contain the following information. Name The primary name of the data or control item, the data store or an external entity. Alias Other names used for the first entry. Where used, how used. A listing of the processes that use the data or control item and how it is used. For example, input to the process, output from the process, as a store, as an external entity. Content description. A notation for representing content. Supplementary information. Other information about data types 
preset values if known, restrictions or limitations, etc. An example of data dictionary is shown in the figure. This is the end of unit number 5.